This is going to be God's Game of Thrones, Episode 4, and we're going to talk about the cherubim, another creature that would have been made before man. It's been around a very long time, and in God's Game of Thrones, God has never knocked off the throne. Not only is no man a match for the Lord, he also has cherubims around his throne that most creatures would be defeated by. People's idea of a cherub is a little fat baby with wings. You may see little statues of these things in your grandma's yard or on her end tables or wherever else. But this isn't what cherubs look like at all. The cherubs are the class of beings that you, Lucifer used to be a part of. When he sinned, he became the black sheep of the family. So they have a free will to choose. And these cherubs we're going to look at are holy creatures who chose the Lord. The fallen cherub, the anointed cherub that covereth, chose himself over the Lord. These creatures aren't like humans. They aren't redeemable. If they chose to follow the devil, then they wouldn't be able to be reconciled to God. And these cherubims seem to be used as guardians. Cherubims kept the way of the tree of life after the fall, and they seem to also transport God's throne. If you've read about the sculpt, sculpted cherubs in Solomon's temple, if the ch real life cherubims match the actual size of the cherubs in in the, that temple, then they're around 15 feet tall with wings that are over 7 feet wide. So they are some big old boys. 1 Kings 6.23 says, And within the oracle he made two cherubims of olive tree, each 10 cubits high. So if a cubit is 18 inches, and you times that by 10, you have 180. Divide that by 12, and you have 15 feet. So you have 15 feet tall creatures. And then in 1 Kings 6.24, in five cubits was the one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub. From the uttermost part of the one wing and to the uttermost part of the other were ten cubits. So five cubits will come out to about seven and a half feet wide. This is a large creature that could look down on a lot of the giants of those days. First Kings 6, 25 and 26, and the other cherub was ten cubits. Both the cherubims were of one measure and one size. The height of the one cherub was ten cubits. So was it of the other cherub. So you see, these are some big creatures. And then if you turn to Ezekiel, this is one of the greatest chapters on the cherubim. Ezekiel 1, and this is where Ezekiel sees the cherubim. Ezekiel 1, 4, it says, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind come out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof was the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So one of the first things you see about a cherub is they have the likeness of a man. So imagine them standing upon their feet just like a man would. Verse 6, And everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. Now here is where it gets wild. They got four faces, they got four wings. So imagine a regular head but with a face on each side of the head. So they pretty much have every angle covered, and you can't get anything by them, literally. The ultimate security guard. Maybe this is why the Lord used them back in Genesis, in Genesis 3.24, when Adam and Eve are kicked out of the garden. It says, So he drove, drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So a guard with four faces that can fly and has a flaming sword. I don't think anybody tried to get into the garden. But now since the cherub have four faces and four wings, and since Lucifer is the anointed cherub, it makes sense that he would have had or maybe possibly still has unless he just changed completely four faces and four wings. The cherubs are holy creatures. But imagine the fear you would have if one walked in. Not that they are ugly. The Bible actually would describe them as perfect in beauty because that's what it says about the devil when he's a cherub. And probably he just looks like a big red dragon now because now he's Leviathan. However, if you saw something so unusual like a cherub 
and that big and tall, it would freak you out. Ezekiel 1, 7, it says, And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So they have a split foot, a calf's foot. That is why they called the devil old split foot. This is one reason why the Lord said the devil was cursed above all cattle in Genesis 3.14. Notice the next thing. They also sparkle like the color of burnished brass. So they are un unlike anything you've ever seen. Verse 8 says, And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Okay, so there's at least four of them. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. No need to turn when you have four faces. You could never talk behind their back. They're always looking right at you. Verse 10, As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Okay, picture this. The four faces are of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. The class that is missing is the reptilian class. With Lucifer gone, he would have probably represented the reptilian class. He's the serpent. He's Leviathan. He's the dragon. He's the Leviathan that you read about in Job 41. So he was would be probably the reptilian class. I turn to Ezekiel chapter 10, we will see another description of the cherub's face. In Ezekiel 10, 14, it says, And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. So notice the only difference from chapter 1 and chapter 10, describing their faces, is that the face of an ox is replaced with the face of a cherub. So this has led many to believe that the cherub's face is the face of an ox. So that's the main reason the serpent was cursed above all cattle. This is why when people in the Bible wanted to make a god, they made a golden calf. The devil at one point at least had a calf's foot and the face of an ox. Whether or not he has it now is besides the point. At one point when he was in his perfect state as a cherub, he had a calf's foot in the face of an ox. In Exodus 32, 23, and 24, For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire. And there came out this calf. Why would the devil want you to worship a golden calf? The devil wants to be like God and get worship. At least at one point he had the face of an ox. And so then came the saying, Holy cow. Where would something like that come from? And since the energy drinks mostly add satanic symbolism to their logos and things like this, it makes sense for them to say, Red Bull gives you wings. The devil had wings. He had an ox face, a calf's foot, and he is now a great red dragon. And they say, Red Bull gives you wings. A lot of those energy drinks got things like that. Like the Monster Energy Drinks logo is the is a 666. It's green. It says, Unleash the Beast. It's green because in Revelation, you see unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. You see, the people... These big shot owners, rich people, they got to show in some way who that they're, whose side they're on. But the cherubs also have the face of a lion. And you know what, 1 Peter 5, 8, it shows us that Satan walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. They have the face of an eagle. And you'll find that devils in the Bible are many times referred to as winged creatures. So you can see many similarities to Satan because he is a has-been. He used to be part of the Guardians. Now, he's the black sheep of the family. Ezekiel 1.11, Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. 
Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. <coughs> so imagine an army going after a cherub. Their bullets would just bounce off the cherub's wings that cover his body. Ezekiel 1, 12 and 13, And they went every one straight forward. Whether the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like the appear like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth a lightning. Notice in the Bible how fire is associated with God and the things of God. For example, in Deuteronomy 4.24, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Revelation 4, 5, and that of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne and cherubs hang around God's throne. They're associated with fire, just like the Lord in his throne is associated with it. And angels, as well as cherubim, are associated with fire. Because it says in Hebrews 1, 7, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Notice that Lucifer, the covering cherub, once walked in the midst of the stones of fire. In Ezekiel 28, 14. Ezekiel 28, 16 says, By the midst of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So Satan is called O covering cherub. He was once in the mountain of God, and he was in the midst of those stones of fire. Ezekiel 1, 14, And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. So if Lucifer was a cherub, then he is fast as lightning. He, may, he probably can't be everywhere at once, but he gets around pretty quick. And there is you a common saying that people use today, fast as lightning. This could also be why the Amish hate electricity, because the devil's associated with electricity. Luke 10, 18 says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Is that because he's a cherub and they move like lightning? They return, ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. But the cherub's hangout spot is obviously around the throne of God. They know who the real top dog is in God's game of thrones. The same thing seems to be for the seraphim, a completely other class of heavenly beings the the angel you got the angels you got the cherubim you got the seraphim i don't believe that they're all the same i believe they're different but these seraphim you can read about these in isaiah 6 1 through 3 it says in the year that king uzziah died i saw also the lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with twain he covered his face with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You will quickly notice that the seraphim have six wings, while the cherubim have four wings. And the seraphims have two which cover their face, two which cover their feet, and two to fly. Notice the words they speak is holy, holy, holy. And this is directed to God on his throne. And these details make me believe that the seraphims are the same creatures described in Revelation 4. Many believe the four beasts in Revelation 4 are cherubim. And I wouldn't argue with you either way. However, the four beasts in Revelation 4 have six wings that match the seraphim in Isaiah 6. And the four beasts in Revelation 4 have one face instead of the four faces as the cherubim. Revelation 4, 6 through 8. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. 
and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So you'll also notice that they say the same words to God as the seraphim in Isaiah 6, which is holy, 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 which the cherubim probably say that too. So so maybe it is cherubim. I, I could be wrong, but it really, to me, looks like the seraphim from Isaiah 6 and not the cherubim. But the word holy is repeated three times, and this reminds you of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So the seraphims worship a triune God. One God manifested in three persons. Isaiah 6, 4 says, And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So the voice of God causes the doors to move. When we don't move at the voice of God, we're dumber than a door. I mean, the door's even moved. The door can't see, hear, or walk, but when God says something, it does it. The animals are nowhere near as intelligent as humans, and yet in the Bible, they always do what God said. It's man that doesn't want to do what God said. The seraphims are good and holy beings, and look at who they hang out with. They hang out with the Lord. Like the cherubims, they hang around the throne of God. So if you will hang around the throne of God, you're going to turn out a lot better. If you're born again, then you have access to the throne room. Take advantage of it. Isaiah 6, 5 says, Then said I, Woe well, is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I will dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. See what happened to Isaiah when he got around the throne and seen the seraphim? And, and the Lord and all these holy things, he saw the throne, he realized how dirty he was, he realized he was undone, then he admitted, I am a man of unclean lips. And if a man does admit that he is dirty, then he's deceived. Verse 6 and 7, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. So seraphims, like the cherubims, can fly. These are powerful beings. Look at the spirit world. It will, will remind you that you are just flesh. You are weak. Don't ever try to put confidence in your flesh. It was made a little lower than the angels. And if it was made a little lower than the angels, then it's certainly lower than the cherubims. However, there is something in you that is holy and that will eventually judge angels. And that is the new man, which you received at salvation. But as just a character build up here for this story we're, of the Bible pretty much we're getting into, this is the cherubim. And they would have been here during that gap between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. They were created before man. And they're very powerful creatures. And that is who Satan used to be. He used to be the anointed cherub. He 